Juliet is one of my personal favorite plays, um, but when I was considering how badly I wanted to play Juliet, I thought how completely egotistical it would be just to put on another production of Romeo and Juliet. So as I was thinking to myself and um, going through a particularly emotional, uh, emotionally turbulent time, no, it wasn't like I was breaking up with you or something, um, <laughs> an emotionally turbulent time with my first love, I, uh, I thought, well, maybe actually they, maybe we've been thinking about it wrong. Maybe it was actually really beautiful that Romeo and Juliet died together because it kind of preserved them as history's greatest lovers. Maybe if actually they had gotten to spend more than three days together, they really wouldn't have made it. Um, so I thought I'd show that to everybody and just have a good old romp in the desert <laughs> and make a really funny film. Where did you get the idea of the station master? I'm asking. Yeah, I didn't write it, so uh, uh, I can't really... I, I'll speak for uh, Ben, who's also the driver um, in the Station Master, but he wrote it, and uh, I believe it was at acting school that he came up with it. Uh, he was the... He, was, he drove it, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really speak for how he sort of came up with it, but um, in acting school. <laughs> Sorry? Why did you choose that? Um, I also personally was in a sort of a, a, a dark spot in my life where I sort of felt like the station master. Uh, I'd recently just moved to London, so I didn't know anyone. Um, so at the time where I got the script, um, I sort of saw myself uh, quite close to the station master, which is why I fell in love with the script uh, and saved up quite a lot of money uh, after I got the script. Where was Station Master filmed? It was filmed in West Somerset, in England, um, and also in a studio in North Acton, in London. Uh, what was your budget? Uh, I don't know how much in dollars, but about £15,000. Um, Just Yeah, a little bit more maybe, I don't know. Um, so it's all my own sort of saved money. Um, I didn't do any crowdfunding or anything like that. Um, Exiles was filmed in, <laughs> we in, in 1998, we filmed Exiles. <laughs> we had a dare that we would like lie about some stuff and I really can't lie about it. It was filmed 20 minutes outside of Barstow. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry. We were, it was filmed 20 minutes outside of Barstow, California, uh, on a dried lake bed called Coyote Lake that, oh, when? Oh my God, I'm sorry. When? It was filmed two years ago. She said, where? <laughs> you. Oh. It was filmed two years ago in Coyote Lake. You gotta go for it. Just how shout long, it out. How long did you have to spend in the desert? Three, four, four, two periods. <laughs> no. Are two periods? <laughs> <laughs> yes, here's the thing. We had to shoot it on my off time from shooting my show, and they only give us a week at a time off. Um, so originally, when I came to Jocelyn and Sharice, I said, great, I have a week off over July 4th. I'm going to go shoot this movie in the desert. And they are both like, do you want to kill a crew? And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, it's 120 degrees in the desert. You're not going out there to shoot. You will kill people. And so I was like, well, my only other break is in November when it's freezing. And they were like, well, we can put coats on everybody and then you can just freeze and it'll be much safer. <laughs> so we went out to, Tommy, I'm getting to it. We went out in July with Tommy and I and Shane and our DP, Igor, and we died in the heat doing a test shoot that was absolutely incredibly beautiful. And um, why are you looking at me? And then we shot it in November, um, but we, it was really over Thanksgiving and I made the promise that I would be able to get my crew home to Thanksgiving. So we had three days to shoot it, uh, one pickup day. And um, so it was all very fast and very quick. We had a lot to shoot in three days. And then, uh, and then we shot a couple of pickup scenes in my garage, actually. We made a blanket fort. That scene when we're under the blankets, we're actually not in the desert at all. We were hiding in my garage. <laughs> Very young, very enthusiastic, um, 
people, of course, YouTube would probably be a comedy. <laughs> but um, where do you see yourself going? What's the future look like for you and, and the status you're in now? I mean, oh. I think we should all answer that going down the line. I think that's a fantastic question. We'll answer it quickly, right to left, left to right, Stacey. Uh, I, I want to be a director for the rest of my life. I love acting and I miss it terribly, and that's what I studied, and I hopefully will someday find that again. But right now I'm directing. Uh, in the next two years, I'm, I'm doing my first feature in a few months now. It's going to be my first studio feature, like movie theater movie, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and hopefully in five years, I'll still be doing that. In 10, 15, and 20, I'll be doing the same. And I look forward to just, I look forward to, I, I look forward to over the years, like getting uh, to make movies that more people see. I love the fact that I work with my friends right now and I never want to stop that. But uh, reaching a larger audience is something that I'm really thrilled about, that I'm finally getting an opportunity to do, hopefully here shortly. Uh, so as the years go on, I want to be working with these exact same people, but on projects that reach an audience uh, larger than 75 people in a room, which is beautiful and fantastic. But I'm excited about being in movie theaters all across the country and telling stories that I'm excited about with these kids. That's where I'd like to be. Yeah, I, I would agree um, to keep working. I work as a producer primarily, but I'm interested in all sorts of things. I um, have directed and produced and write and um, to be hopefully getting out to a larger audience. That's why we come to these festivals to, you know, reach more people. And, uh, yeah, to keep working with people that we love to work with and our friends. Yeah, I'm just going to keep on going down the line. Um, uh, yeah, I hope in the future to keep on, to, to keep on producing material. And by producing, I mean not just producing, but writing, creating, acting, and uh, being involved with. Uh, material that I feel very proud of and that I feel has a my voice in it as well as my friends voices um, so I hope that in the future I like we all said get to keep on working with my friends and keep on reaching a larger and larger audience because this is this is our lives this is our art and our craft so I hope that it only continues to snowball from here uh, yeah I'm um, sort of just taking day by day really I Currently I direct music videos back in Norway, where I'm from. Um, so I'm sort of just taking day by day and see how things go. Um, don't have anything planned really, so yeah. We'll see. Oh, you're young, talented. We feel like we should the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. I think I think Exiles is uh, is 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 really competent in a lot of ways. I, I think Exiles is 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 a fantastically uh, simple and patient script, and I think it's beautiful and it's uh, a really interesting topic. And I think that visually, we achieve things that a lot of people don't often achieve. Um, it uh, is a test of patience for me in in the filming of it and in the process of editing it down with Troyan and our editors. And, uh, and it is not the typical type of material that I initially uh, connect to, because I like visceral, really aggressive sorts of things. So when I watch it, uh, I'm, I'm proud of, of what we accomplished that I think is really elegant. Uh, and so, and I do think it's an elegant movie. I think it was an elegant script that was elegantly acted, that was elegantly crafted together. And I think that it is a testament to patience and and uh, and a and a really drawn out, uh, surreal experience. And I like that about it. Um, but it's also a test of patience for me as an audience member because I'm not typically drawn to things that are so moody and atmospheric. So. I'm, I'm torn because an, as an audience member, what I want to sit through is maybe not that film, but I think that there is something about that that is so worthwhile, right? Because if you don't know that he's going to turn around and say Juliet at one moment, like you get that and the pieces fall together from the previous 20 minutes and I think that that's the magic in these sorts of films. So as an audience member and as a filmmaker, I'm both torn because I think this is like a lesson you know, in storytelling that you should be patient and you should earn that, but at the same time, I was born in 1986 and I'm living in 2013 and I want everything thrown at me at once. So I don't know. 
I don't know, what did you think about the movie? <laughs> Our total budget was a number that I, we're all clueless about. We, uh, we, raised, we raised, I think, $16,000 on Kickstarter, and Choin was very generous in donating uh, the funds that were needed to put us together uh, beyond that. And I would say it was produced for a price. Uh, his name's Igor Kravatov, and he is the most talented cinematographer working in America today. He's a, he's a Russian national who is being constantly tracked down by, uh, you know, uh, immigration authority. No, he's, he's, a Rus he's a Russian national, he's born in Moscow, lived in Italy and, and, and Brussels, and he's our best friend, and he lives in my building on the first floor. And he's my closest friend, and he was shooting a lot of fashion work, a lot of commercial work, a lot of music video work, and a lot of doc work. And he came out of NYU a year after we came out of USC, and he works constantly. And he's aggressive, and he's hardworking, and he was completely inexperienced in working in narrative film compared to uh, his experience elsewhere. Uh, but he shot a lot, and he knows a lot, and he cares about story as much as all of us. And the reason why anything looks good in that is as much his hand as any of ours. He's, a, I, I call him ballers, he's a baller. Thank <laughs> you.